The Proud Boys are showing up at more and more of these little school board meetings. In fact, they did this recently, just last two nights ago, at New Hanover County's school board meeting. Seven members of them showed up. They lined the back wall of the Board of Education Center throughout the public comment period and ventured outside as the board moved into conducting business. Here's the most fun part of this story. It's probably the only fun part of the story. The men declined to share their names. One said that if they wished to identify themselves, they wouldn't have worn face coverings. So they didn't want you to know who they are, so they were covering their faces. Well, what were they there for? Well, in part to make their presence known in support of free speech, but also they wanted the mask requirement to be dropped. So they went there covering their faces, advocating for masks to no longer be required. A little bit of a muddled message. Also, what's being done by the right at these Board of Education meetings? Usually censorship and trying to stop things from being teached. So the free speech thing is also a little bit muddled. They don't entirely seem to understand what they're there for. But what's their strategy? Well, one proud boy said, it's an anonymous one again, they don't want to be identified. Says if our presence escalates that pressure and makes it the point where we become a distraction to conducting business, and they just change the mask mandate so we go away, that's a win. I get that. I don't even think that's necessarily that bad of a strategy. It's a weird one. It doesn't seem it doesn't seem as if it's based on an understanding of your position being rational or logical that it should have this outcome. You're just creating a nuisance, but fine. I'm fine with protests. I believe that activism comes in many flavors. Um theirs is one that's sort of implicit with violence. Um, two of their members say that they had attended three past school board meetings each, but this is the first time they'd worn their proud boy colors. They wore proud boy colors, don't they sound cool? They wore black and yellow polos and neck gaiters with PB printing. One kept on a tactical vest and said, we've just been dressing incognito and watching what's going on. So they wore a tactical vest because again, like in best case scenario, these are people who like to cosplay that they're vigilantes or militia members or will get involved in some violence. All too often though, it isn't just cosplay, they actually do these things. They attack people, they they brutalize protesters and those sorts of things. But now they want to get involved in what the right is up to. And what the right is up to is getting involved with your school board. So this is New Hanover County School Board. I don't know how many areas they can cover you know, in a given month, but I do want you to be aware of this. If you are trying to inject some sanity back into the school board meetings in your area, if you are trying to fight back against the people are saying, are they fans of peanut butter? Again, muddled messages with the PB buddy. But anyway, um, if you are worried about the way that right wingers and uh, out of control evangelicals are trying to take over the education of your kids and you want to fight back against that, understand that some of the people who will be showing up are not just randos. They're proud boys, they're relatively organized randos who have a history of supporting violence against those they don't agree with. And if you are a school board member, if you have just been trying to serve maybe for years, maybe for decades on your school board, you now are even at more risk of violence, harassment and targeting. They're being very clear about that. By the way, I'm gonna jump ahead just slightly. Um, One member, an Infowars contributor with purported ties to the group uh, was pictured recently wearing a shirt that said Pinochet did nothing wrong. If you're not familiar with Augusto Pinochet, it's a former right wing dictator of Chile who tortured, detained and killed tens of thousands of his political enemies. Why do I mention that? Because again, there is a theme to the news this year and it is there is no story that eventually won't involve a little essence, a little spice of approval of political violence. And so just a reminder that that is where America is moving, where we have some people who are just trying to maintain the status quo regardless of the costs, some who are trying to move our government in direction of actually identifying crises and dealing with them. And some who just believe that the main thing lacking in American democracy is enough people being beaten and killed. And that is coming across in so many stories, literally from protests for racial violence to should there be a mask mandate in an elementary school. You cannot escape the threats of violence these days. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want, with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.